Just before we get into this video guys, if you want to follow me on social media, on Twitter and Instagram, the links are here. And if you also want to support me on Patreon as well and help out my channel, that would be absolutely awesome as well. But, let's get on with the video. Hey guys, it is Wingy here and welcome to a brand new video. So today I want to talk to you about a TV show known as Inside Number 9. You may have heard a few weeks ago that they did a live episode. I myself watched it and... It was really fucking good. But I just want to talk about it because I know some of you guys who watch my channel, you will have seen it. But if you haven't seen it, I want you guys to check it out. And the annoying thing is, because of the nature of Inside Number 9, I can't really encourage you guys to watch it without ruining it. Because I'm pretty sure that you need to go in blind if you're going to watch this series. No, not pretty sure. Fucking certain. You do need to know absolutely Fuck all, pretty much. So, for those who don't know what it is, it's made by the same people who have done League of Gentlemen and Psychoville. Well, most of them anyway. Reese Shearsmith and Steve Pemberton. If you're familiar with Black Mirror, it's a similar kind of format in the sense that each episode is an individual story with a different set of characters and a different type of story, different type of setting. It's not like Psychoville or League of Gentlemen where it's in like one location and every episode follows certain characters that will recur throughout the series. You could literally throw on episode one series one and then the next episode you could throw on series four episode two and you'd be totally fine and that i think allows a certain amount of freedom the sense that because you are not tied down to one certain genre one set of people to work with in terms of the cast or characters at least anyway one type of story like you can literally do anything and that's where i think inside number nine really really shines because in here you have episodes that are homages to 70s tv you've got episodes that are filmed purely on like webcams episodes that are totally silent sometimes there's comedy sometimes there's horror sometimes there's science fiction sometimes there's supernatural and i think one of the biggest strengths of inside number nine is the fact that one week it can do an episode that is quite comedic and silly but the week after it's a really serious dark grounded story but it totally works in the format of inside number nine because believe it or not even though that they do have such a vast amount of freedom when they are writing this there is a pattern with each episode and you might think well hang on that's repetitive but really it isn't but you do see certain beats and points where you just like yep okay this feels like inside number nine now the main thing that i want to talk about is something that i can't really fucking talk about obviously there's people in the comments who are just going to spoil every single fucking episode but please don't for those people who haven't seen it because i want them to see it as well one of the genius things of inside number nine is that with every episode there is something that will throw you off some type of twist now i'm not going to sit here and tell you that every single twist that happens within the context of the show is 100 absolutely fucking amazing but what i will say is that a lot of the twists you don't see coming. Now, some of them, yeah, you do. Even in good episodes, the twist happens and then you're just like, oh, that's kind of a letdown because in my head, I was thinking what the twist could be and in my head, I think it was better. But for me personally, from my experience, that's a really rare occurrence. Maybe one or two episodes a series, that will happen. The rest of the time, it's something that you didn't fucking see coming whatsoever. And it's kind of annoying that I have to tell you guys about the fact that there's twists because then you'll just sort of be like, oh, well, I know that there's going to be a twist now and that what I'm watching is going to lead to ultimately something totally different. But the more you watch Inside Number 9, the more you sort of learn to accept that anyway. And that is a frustrating thing. Every episode you're watching it thinking... What's this fucking twist then? But that's also part of the enjoyment of Inside Number 9. Trying to figure out what they're going to do. How they're going to get out of this one. What's going to be the big reveal at the end. And trust me, there have been some shocking twists in this series. 12 Days of Christine. That one immediately springs to mind. I could not have called that one. The Devil of Christmas as well. I don't know what the general consensus on the episode is. But I fucking love that one. Mostly for the twist. When you're watching it, it is rather sort of mundane. But then it gets to the very end. And I'm just like, holy fuck. Fuck. And there's a few others here and there. The only consistent thing besides the twists in Inside Number 9 is the fact that Reese Shearsmith and Steve Pemberton appear in every single episode. So sometimes they'll be playing characters that look very much like themselves, other times they'll be in wigs and wearing costumes and moustaches, and sometimes they'll play it straight, sometimes they'll play it gay. They're not the same character every time, and I think they handle it really, really well. Sometimes in stuff like League of Gentlemen and Psychoville and other TV shows that I've seen them in, they can be a bit over the top and they can be a bit 
I don't know, hammy, I guess. But in this series, I don't find that they are. I find that, well, I think maybe it's the benefit of writing for themselves. They know what their strengths are as actors and it really comes across on screen, in my opinion at least, anyway. I probably will at some point do a list of my favourite Inside Number 9 episodes because I definitely want to talk about it a bit more. But this was just sort of like a first video sort of talking about it in case some people hadn't seen it. Because people recommend TV shows to me all the time, so I just thought, you know what, let me recommend something to you, even though hopefully most of you guys are watching it anyway. But in the comments below, let me know what you think. Have you seen Inside Number 9? And if so, what are some of your favourite episodes? Actually, no, we'll narrow that down. What is your favourite episode of Inside Number 9? And I'm going to say, don't say 12 Days of Christine because that's too fucking obvious, isn't it? Besides that one, what is your favourite episode of Inside Number 9? And if you hadn't seen it before and you went away and checked it out, come back here and let me know what you thought of it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe for more, and also social media links and Patreon are in the description down below. Follow me and all that sort of crap, then yeah, I'll love you forever. But until next time, guys, you take care of yourselves. Goodbye. <laughs>